So usually rigorous science or rigor in science is sort of defined as being um, both you know robust and unbiased. Rigor m means things at different scales. It means what you do on a daily basis. Uh, you know that means how you keep your lab notebook, the attention to detail of how you're setting up that experiment. But if you're not paying attention and being rigorous on a daily basis, you're compromising your ability to make progress on your project overall. At the other scale, rigor means how you collect a large body of experiments that you've done in the laboratory um, and condense them effectively into a single protocol or collection of protocols that allow other investigators to follow that effectively as a, as a script that allows them to uh, reproduce your results. I guess there are a couple of components to doing rigorous science. Certainly, perhaps the most is providing to the field a result which is reproducible. And uh, that comes from being rigorous about describing the methods you've used and uh, controlling variables, et cetera. So most of the time in science, we don't actually make, or quite often, the right interpretation of the result. That may come years down the line. But if everybody, if the result is, is because it was done, experiments were done rigorously, is a valid result, people can go back and use that result to make informed models and decisions. If, if it's a fake result because it wasn't done rigorously, you can mislead fields for generations. You know, I think this issue extends all the way from a legal situation where someone knowingly falsified data to on the far other extreme recognizing the imperfection of science itself. Of course, in the middle of there, uh, of, of this range, is, um, you know, have, have I done the experiment as well as I possibly could? So obviously, you know, you want all experiments that you do in your hands under your conditions to be reproducible. So that is an absolute must. You know, you definitely, there's, there's inherent um, noise in the biological systems, there's going to be inherent variability in biological systems, and so you want to make sure that any effect that you're seeing is not a result of that, you know, inherent variability, but is an actual true effect. When I think about reproducibility, I think of it at two levels. The first one is, is it, is it reproducible in my lab? And the second one, is it reproducible to the community? What I request from people in, in the lab to make sure that somebody else in lab has seen, has looked at and seen what they are, what they are reporting. So once a person is sure about a result, I ask them to show that result to somebody else to get that other person's opinion. That's one. The second thing is that, that I do is that for every paper that we publish, I have personally looked at that, at that data. And I'm, I'm not talking about pictures, I have actually looked at these strains. So I have my own interpretation of the phenotypes, uh, usually for all figures. And then the third thing is that I, as soon as the result is uh, ready for publication, I encourage uh, people in the field to look at it. I, I pride myself on running a, a collaborative lab. We aspire to be generous with our reagents and our knowledge. We engage other people in the community and make sure that uh, they benefit from our knowledge, but also they, they, they see what we're looking at and they are they challenge it. I think it's a much more effective argument to be having a conversation about openness in science than rigorousness in science. When we talk about rigorous experimentation, I think what the NIH would like to say is, is that if someone did that same experiment as a jumping off point to follow up, that they should get the same result. But then that also means that we also have to acknowledge that there are, there's a precision to doing experiments that doesn't always get translated to say a protocol or I mean even worse how protocols get written up for papers and so what that might mean is is that there might need to be an openness between labs to discuss the specific situations under which experiments are done so that precision can be maintained and obviously you want that. You want other people to be able to reproduce your work. In fact, it's a tribute to you. If you come up with something that's truly interesting and important, then the greatest 
tribute is that other people will actually want to produce your, reproduce your experiment. The most valuable commodity you have as a scientist is your reputation. That is the single most, uh, the greatest value that lasts with you, whether you're a gra graduate student, a postdoc, or a, a, a senior investigator. So your credibility as a scientist really demands that you look at every experiment not through the lens of what was easy to do, but what was best actually for ensuring that the way you did that experiment is actually giving you um, a correct answer. <laughs>